All right, today I want to talk to you a little bit about brushes and the different brush shapes and specifically the different brush hairs that might come in the bristle portion of a paintbrush. But before we get to that, let's talk about the individual parts of a paintbrush specifically so that you can identify them and know what their purpose is. And I'll just pick up this first brush here. If you look at the brush here, we've got the end of the brush here where we have either natural or synthetic fibers here that uh, actually are the, the, this is the part of the paintbrush that picks up the paint obviously and spreads it over the surface, a very important part. This part of the brush is referred to as the bristle section of the brush. And inside of the bristle portion of the brush, there are specific parts. The very end of the brush here is referred to as the toe. And uh, this middle portion is referred to as the belly of the paintbrush. Um, and of course, these are the two parts that will come in contact with paint most frequently and are the parts that are going to be spreading the paint over the surface. The second part right here is a ferrule. And this ferrule is basically, most of the time, it's made out of metal. And it's the metal is what holds the fiber materials in the end of the brush together. And uh, it holds the, not only does it hold these pieces of fibers together at the end of the brush, but it also holds the fibrous materials to the handle itself. And this is the handle down here at the bottom. Um, now within the ferrule itself, there are specific parts. If one is crimped like this one here or mashed right here, this is known as the heel of the brush. And then right here, if it's crimped, this is referred to as the crimp. And this is the connection between the ferrule and of course the handle. And then you have the handle portion. And uh, most brushes are, the handle is made out of some hardwood material or some sturdy material like plastic. A lot of the newer brushes uh, are made with a plastic handle. Um, some of the other older ones um, use a hardwood and are coated with uh, a nice water resistant paint. Um, and on the brush itself, you'll find some information, or on the handle itself, you'll find some information right here. There's usually a number, and uh, this number is unique to manufacturers, and this number basically designates the width of the brush. Now, this one is a number six here, but a number six with a different manufacturer might look completely different. So uh, they kind of, there's not really a standard numbering system here when it comes to the handles. Uh, or the brush sizes and shapes. Working down a little bit further, sometimes the manufacturer will put their name on the side of the brush. And then right here we've got some information about what type of brush it is. This one says synthetic, and that refers to the fiber material in the end. These are synthetic bristles. And then here at the bottom it says what type of brush it is. And this refers to the shape of the bristles down here at the end, and, and we'll get into that in just a moment. This one is a flat brush. Now, some brushes have long handles. This one has a very long handle. And some brushes, of course, have short handles. This one has a short handle. Uh, the long, you can use both, it doesn't matter. The long handles are typically used for painting on larger canvases. So you're talking about oils and acrylics here, where the artist can really hold the brush a little further down on the handle and make their marks. So typically when you're working a little further away from your painting, you're going to want to work with a longer handled brush. If you prefer to work close or you like to work on a flat surface, then a shorter brush would do. Um, and this one, of course, has a shorter handle. And these are typically used more often in watercolor paintings and detailed acrylics. But they can also be used for oils. Uh, don't feel like there's any rules here where if you're working with oils, you tell yourself you've got to have a long handled brush. That's not uh, the way it is. So you can use a shorter handled brush for sure. Uh, all right, let's talk about the different brush types here. And then we'll talk a little bit about the different brush hairs. So I have several um, of my brushes out here and some of these I use and some of these I just really don't use at all. Um, and I've got a lot more brushes so let's first talk about uh, the brush that we just had a moment ago, and this is a flat brush. Now, a flat brush usually features, or it always features, longer bristles at the end. It's almost a rectangular shape that happens up here with the bristles. 
Uh, this allows us to get a lot of paint loaded into the brush and it's got quite a bit of flexibility so you can really pull the paint out and uh, make some really nice long strokes with it here and this is again referred to as a flat brush all right the second brush that we're going to look at is uh, very similar but a little bit different and this is called a bright brush and you'll notice that the bristles uh, almost form a square shape instead of a long or an elongated rectangle they're more of a square shape. Now, this allows for a little bit less less paint to be loaded into the tip of the brush, so you're gonna have to reload a little bit more often, and there's a little bit less of a spring that happens with a bright brush here. Okay, so we've got a flat and a bright, and then probably the most popular brush is known as a round brush and a round brush uh, is round. All the way around it, it's round. So if I twirl that here, you can see it's a round brush, and usually the tip of a round brush is rounded off at the end. If you're just starting painting and you're trying to figure out what type of brush to get, I would recommend getting a round brush. It also wouldn't hurt to get a flat brush as well. You can do a lot of things with just these two brushes. In fact, most of the time, these are the only two types of brushes that I use. I also like bright brushes. Not everyone really likes bright brushes, but I like to use bright brushes as well. Um, this one is also a round brush. Now this is a filbert brush. And a filbert brush has a curved end to it. So a flat brush has a flat end bright brush also has a flat end but a filbert brush has somewhat of a curve and this is actually a uh, filbert rake brush and this means that the hairs at the end the bristles uh, have a little bit of separation there some of the fibers go a little bit further than the others and that's going to create some nice brush strokes really visible brush strokes with this brush not all filbert brushes are like this this is kind of a specialty filbert brush um, so this is a filbert all right, the next brush we'll look at is a fan brush. Now this brush isn't used that often. It's really used for like textural effects if you want to create uh, little trees or bushes or uh, anything like that. Um, this fan brush really creates a nice texture for that. And you can see the ferrule is a little bit different. It's spread out on the end instead of cutting straight off like we see in a lot of the other brushes. Um, so with a fan brush, you wouldn't necessarily paint like this, although you can if you want to, but you almost just dab the surface with a fan brush to create interesting textures. All right, the next brush here is called a script brush. It's also commonly called as a rigger brush or a liner. So it has many names, but it's basically the bristles are just very long and skinny, which uh, is going to allow for a lot of paint to get soaked into these bristles so that when you pull it over the surface you can create some really nice and controlled lines so this is really a super detail oriented brush here and this is a script or a rigger brush or a liner brush whatever you want to call it there uh, okay this next brush is an angled brush uh, pretty obviously named for the angled tip here. Um, now I really never use this brush at all, but I, I figured I'd, I'd show it to you here. Um, of course, with the angled brush, you can, uh, if, it kind of works a little bit better with the angle that you might touch the surface here, so you can create some nice strong lines. You can also pull it in different directions to create some interesting effects. Um, but this is an angled brush, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out here who out there who like to use an angled brush. Um, I really don't use it that much, but here it is. All right, the next brush is called a mop brush. And a mop brush has uh, just a big density or a lot of uh, bristles here in the end. And it's really designed to pick up a lot of the medium into the brush. Um, it can be used for other, uh, other uses as well. But uh, for watercolor, this can pick up a lot of water and really spread a super light wash over the surface with a lot of water in the bristles. It can, be also, it can also be used for uh, blending oil paint if you're using a, a softer, softer set of bristles here in the end. Uh, so this is a mop brush, and we'll take a look at, at how that works in just a moment. 
This is known as a hake brush and mostly used for watercolor. Um, and this, of course, is somewhat of a bright, I guess, uh, a bright hake brush. It's a pretty long handled brush here. Um, so anyway, all right, let's next take a look at the different hairs and fibers that exist in each one of these brushes. There's basically several different types of animal hair, and there's a lot, actually there's lots of different types of animal hair that goes into the brushes. And sometimes the, the hair that's designated is a little bit confusing. It's actually a little bit misleading. Um, so let's start looking at a few of them. The first animal hair that I wanna talk about is sable. Um, now, sable is a really soft brush. It's very nice and springy if you get a, a good sable brush. It's uh, soft, as I said, so it makes it great for using with watercolor. It's also used for detailed work in oils. Sable hair comes from the tails of an animal from the mink family, but some sable brushes also come from the tails of weasels. The hair is really nice and fine, and this type of brush is really sought after by a lot of watercolor artists and oil painters. So this is a sable brush, and it would usually be designated here on the handle what type of hair is used in the brush. All right, the next type of brush here is a hog bristle, and uh, these are very inexpensive most of the time and they're super springy, so they'll just bounce right back in shape, and they're super coarse, too. Uh, probably one of the coarsest hairs used in a brush is the hog hair here. And this is most commonly used for oil or acrylic. It really gets a lot of paint in there, and it spreads it easily, and the brush strokes are very, very visible with a hog bristle brush. All right, the next hair I want to talk to you about is, uh, let's go ahead and talk about um, goat hair. So I don't have all, all these brushes don't necessarily line up with all the hairs that are available, but I do have a few and I'll show you the different types of hair here. This is goat hair and goat hair is, uh, doesn't have a lot of spring when it's wet. So these bristles, when they are w wet, might bend a little bit and kind of stay in that shape. In other words, they won't bounce back. Right now this brush is dry, so it bounces back. But uh, when it's wet, it's not going to have a lot of spring. Uh, but it does form a sharp point. Obviously, this one's not going to form a sharp point. So if you're getting some details in there, um, you can get those details. But, of course, you'll have to re-wet the brush, get a little bit more medium on the brush to make uh, those super precise marks. These brushes are best used, or this animal hair brush is best used for inks and watercolor. Anything that's going to kind of be a soft medium here, uh, it, goat hair is good for. Um, all right, this brush here is labeled as camel hair, and you, you see these brushes all over the place with the camel hair, but it's really not camel hair at all. Instead, it's just a mixture of other animal hairs. Uh, usually camel hair, hair brushes are pretty inexpensive, um, so it's not really camel hair in here. It's just a mixture of other animal hair fibers that are found in in this brush here. Um, also, you might find some that are labeled as pony hair. Now, this one's not labeled as pony hair, but I'm pretty sure this is pony hair here. Um, and the pony hair brushes are also, they have a, a horse hair in them, but they also have a mixture of other hairs as well. And of course, this is a very obviously cheap brush here as the fibers just pull right out of the ferrule here. Um, so, this is pony hair. And pony hair is really good for watercolor, tempera, acrylic, um, you know, water-based media. You're not going to want to use this brush with oil paint or anything really, really thick. All right, uh, now let's go to my favorite, which are synthetic brush fibers. Um, and this guy right here, the script brush, is made of synthetic nylon. Um, and Nylon brushes or polyester brushes or any any type of synthetic brush is really capable of use with any type of painting medium, whether it be watercolor, tempera, acrylic, oils, or inks. Uh, these synthetic brushes are great for all of those uses. The fibers are very tough. Uh, they don't pull out too much if you get a pretty good quality brush. 
and it has excellent spring so it's going to bounce back in shape really nicely and it holds its form really nicely as well so uh, there's a lot of great things about using natural animal hair brushes but synthetic brushes are uh, what i'll normally go after when i'm painting um, they just seem like to be the best bet for me so uh, so we've got several different animal hairs to choose from and several different brush shapes to choose from. Now let's take a look at these brushes in action. Let's first take a look at a few of these brushes in action using acrylics, and then we'll switch over to watercolor. We'll start by looking at the flat brush. If you'll remember, a flat brush is a rectangular shaped bristle section. It's capable of holding quite a bit of paint. In this case, I'm using the full body paint without any solvent at all. Once you've exhausted all the paint on one side of the flat brush, you can simply flip it over and it's almost like you've reloaded your brush. Flat brushes are also capable of creating nice sharp lines and defining hard edges in paintings. With a bit of solvent mixed with the paint, in this case water, the paint flows a little bit easier and you can create a variety of different strokes. Flat brushes are also capable of creating nice textures and perhaps a little bit of hatching and cross hatching. The next brush is the bright brush and if you'll remember it's more of a square shape at the bristle section of the brush. Like the flat brush, bright brushes are capable of creating some nice brush strokes that cover the surface really nicely with a, a good amount of paint. The only problem with bright brushes is they don't hold quite as much paint in the bristle section and you can see it kind of moves down to the belly section. So you might have to press a little bit more to get some of that paint to the tip when using a bright brush. Like with the flat brush, bright brushes can be used to create nice lines and define sharp edges in a painting. Bright brushes are also excellent for dabbing the surface. You can build up paint on the surface quickly, creating impasto effects or other nice textures. With a bit of solvent mixed with the paint, the paint flows a bit easier with a bright brush. The next brush is a filbert brush, and if you'll remember, it has somewhat of a curved tip. Filbert brushes are really sought after because of the brush strokes that they produce. You can create a variety of different brush strokes. Obviously, a filbert brush wouldn't be the best selection for creating sharp edges, but the brush strokes are very visible with a filbert brush. You can still use the edge somewhat, but you're not going to get those nice sharp lines that you get with a flat or a bright brush. The fourth brush is a fan brush, and this is really used for textural effects. Most people use the fan brush to just gently dab the surface, creating those textures. Of course, it can be used any way that you prefer. Fan brushes are nice for creating areas of trees and bushes. Alright, let's switch over to watercolor now and we'll start with the mop brush. A mop brush has a lot of hairs in the end that will hold a lot of water, especially when you're painting with watercolor. It will allow you to spread a nice even coating of color on the surface. Next is the round brush, and this is probably the most popular brush out there. A round brush is capable of producing a variety of marks, from kind of thick marks to more detailed marks. So it's really probably the most versatile brush of the bunch. Again, you can create nice lines, maybe some hatching and cross hatching, but you can also press down on the brush and get a lot of paint on the surface. The last brush we'll look at is the script rigger or liner brush. Now despite this brush's skinny shape, it's capable of holding quite a bit of paint. 
This will allow you to pull the paint over the surface, creating nice, precise lines. This brush is excellent for painting trees or other small details that require precise line work. Of course, this brush is also excellent for signing your work. So I hope you enjoyed this overview at looking at different types of brushes, and I hope this video helped you out. If you enjoyed this video and you're ready to learn more, why not check out four video courses, live instruction, and over 6,000 minutes of art instruction, which include eBooks, live lessons, lesson plans, and more. Just click on the button to learn more now.